In this How to Svelte, we're going to create an off canvas menu that toggles. Click it to open it, and then click the X to close it. We'll also consider uh, using this full screen version too. So we'll tackle both all in this one lesson. Let's go ahead and grab some of this HTML. And we'll also grab the CSS. And we'll go ahead and fix some of these errors. Okay, good. So the idea of this particular component is all based around this width property in the side nav. The side nav is going to be the menu that comes out. And if I set this to 100%, you can see it comes all the way out. If I set it to 40%, it's a smaller menu. And if back at zero, it doesn't exist at all. So this is basically the idea. Let me go ahead and cut these style tags and put them below. So here's the side nav menu, and we'll work a few different ways. Uh, we'll construct it one way and then break it down and do it another way, just so you can see various ways to do this in Svelte. So let's do an inline style, and we'll set the width property to 100%. If we do that, you can see it comes out, set it back to zero, and then we'll abstract this out a little bit using Svelte tags, and we'll call this one nav width. Move it up to the script tags. And again, we can set this to 100 to get the full menu, 40 to get a smaller menu, and zero. So the question is, is how do we control this nav width? And we do that by clicking on this open link here, which is actually a span tag. In fact, you can even see they have an on-click. Let me go ahead and move this span so it's over there and let's put a little bit of content in this menu here so this nav width is going to be controlled by this on click event on the span tag so let's change the on click attribute to a svelte on click and we'll go ahead and use their same function and up here in the script tags we'll define that and when we open it, we'll just set nav to be equal to 100. So now when that gets clicked, it opens. Now it won't close yet because we haven't dealt with this X yet. And that X is right here. Again, we get a clue with the on click attribute. So let's change it over to Svelte. We'll use the same function name. And we'll just copy and paste this. So now we click open, it opens, we click the X and it closes. Now, one thing that we can do is take this open, we can take this open span and change it to something that's a little bit more realistic. We, we generally see in the web world, this kind of hamburger icon. So why don't we get this and bring that over? Okay, good. So now we've got the hamburger icon here and we click on it and nothing happens yet, but let's go ahead and take the same functionality we gave to the span tag and we'll just move it on over to this container, which already has an on-click attribute. And so now if we click it, it opens and it closes. Now, if I set the open to be 40 instead of 100, you can see when we click the hamburger icon, um, it's not entirely doing the behavior that it should. If you come over here and we click on this, you can see it changes to an X. Click on it again, and it goes back to the hamburger. So when we click on it, what's happening is there is a class being added called change. And you can see change uses a transform to rotate certain divs. It sets one of the divs to opacity zero. So let's figure out a way that we can add this change to our hamburger icon. We'll do that 
in this area. So if I add the class change now, let's see what happens. Yep, it changes into an X. So that is the thing. So we just need to add it on certain specific conditions. And that condition is we'll add the class change when some value evaluates to true. And we'll let's go ahead and make a variable called nav open. Now we haven't declared this yet, so we'll do that. We'll say let nav open equal false. And if we say true, what happens? Yep, when we set it to true, it turns into an X. And when we set it to false, it goes back. So now we're gonna need to control this Boolean inside the open nav and the closed nav. So we'll set open nav, we'll assign it to the opposite of whatever it is. And we'll do the same thing here. So now when I click on this, the menu opens and the hamburger icons behavior is exactly as we want it to be. Now when I click it again, it removes, but the menu doesn't close. So right now the hamburger menu is calling the open nav, but it's not calling the close nav. So it'd be great if we could just take both of these functions and refactor them into one. So let's just call this handle nav. And the first part, which you can see is identical, let's go ahead and put that there. But the second part will say if nav open, so now we can comment these out. And then now we'll need to take handle nav and go down to our other event handler or event listeners here and replace close nav with handle nav and open nav with handle nav. So now if I click this, it opens. If I click it again, it closes. Open and I can click the X and that closes. So now we have just one function to handle both situations. Now, the next thing we should do is probably refactor this into a way that JavaScript would probably really do this. You can see we're controlling this with this inline style attribute, and we're controlling the percentage that the, the menu is doing. But we wouldn't generally do this. It's, it's not a bad idea, but I just want to show you in Svelte how you can use Svelte syntax to pipe in a value. But let's go ahead and do it the way we, we would generally do it in JavaScript, which is by adding a class. So right now, when the nav is open, it goes to 40%. Let's go down into the CSS. How about right here? Let's go ahead and make a class called open. And that class will be the equivalent of a width property set to 40%. So now we can add this open class to whatever thing we want to add it to. And then in this case, we want to add it to the menu. And if I remove this property and add the open class to the side nav, you can see it comes out. So it is working, but again, we need to add it based on a condition, um, just like we did with this X. When I click this X, when I click this hamburger and it turns into an X, it's based on adding this change class when the nav evaluates to true, nav open evaluates to true. We're gonna do the same thing here. On this side nav, we'll add a class of open, oops, when nav open evaluates to true. So now we can get rid of the nav width variable up here. Uh, we don't need to even use it here. Um, just whenever nav open is true, then this class will get added. Let's see what happens. Good, and let's just check that out too in the... So there's the class open, you can see it. If I click it again, it goes away. Click it again, it comes back. So that's what's happening. It's a much more common way to do this in JavaScript is just to add and remove classes. So good, we've got the menu working. Um, from here on out, these are just some extras. And one extra that we can do is we can make the menu come in Right now it's coming in from the left side, but we can make it come in from the right side. 
and we would do that down here in our CSS. Instead of making it left zero, we would make it right zero. Now if we do that, it comes in from the right side. Behavior is the same though. In our case, we'll keep it on the left. And then another little trick that we can do is if we come over here, you can see when this canvas menu comes on the screen, it actually, it looks like it's pushing this whole div right here to the right. And if I close it, then it looks like it's going back again. So in order to get that effect, all we have to do is control this main, this div with an ID of main, that's what this is. So let's go down and look at that. And if we give it a margin left property of the same value that we're opening the menu of 40%, see what happens? It pushes over by 40% by the same amount up here. And again, we can do that with a class. Let's make another class and we'll call this uh, kind of a long name, but it lets us know what's going on. And we'll set the rule to margin left, move it over by 40%. Now this class will get added to this main. So we'll add this class, push main to right, when some variable, something evaluates to true. And what is it going to be? It's going to be the exact same thing we've been using, when nav open evaluates to true. So now when we open it, this main gets pushed over. Close it, goes back. And then the last uh, extra I want to show you, which you know you may or may not use, but it's still good to ha have some practice using this in Svelte, is let's just say we want to set up a situation where we can use our keyboard to close the menu. In that case, we would set up this Svelte window, and we would say on key down, and then we'll call a function here, and we'll we'll call it handle nav with key. And we're going to need to pass in the event object. And we basically want to say if uh, the event object um, code property is equal to, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the F1 key. F1. So if we press the F1 key, then let's toggle nav open to the, its opposite value. And I tell you what, what we're also gonna do is console log what e.code is so we can see if, if it actually is working. So you, you see, I pressed F1 and it opened. I press it again and it closes. I can still use the icons. And again, I can use F1 to open it and close it. So a little trick you can use if you want that ability. Okay, that wraps it up.